Okay, can you tell us your name and a little bit about yourself? My name is Brax Boyd. I'm 61 years old, born in 1952. I've been doing martial arts since 1969. I started martial arts at the grant at the uh, uh, General Dynamics Recreation Association with Pete Ludwig and J. Pat Burleson in 1969. I've been doing martial arts since then. I opened my karate school with a guy named Jim Cho. 1979. It's now called the Grand Prairie Karate Academy. It's one of the top schools, I think, in the area. And we teach American Taekwondo. But we also teach skilled kicking, punching, and blocking for street defense. And that's why we're here today to talk about kick, kicking, punching, elbow, head strikes, things that are going to make you survive on the street. And you're not, I know you're not here to brag, but you have a PhD as well, correct? Uh, I've been lucky enough to uh, earn a, a, a terminal degree. And uh, that's what I do. I teach uh, school, I teach college level uh, classes, and I teach uh, American government, uh, foreign policy, and any uh, electives uh, directed toward uh, government and study of politics and government. I know you've, uh, you were a bouncer in the past. Apparently, um, from what the rumor is, that some of the toughest honky tonks in Fort Worth. Um, where, where, tell us a little about your history working at the bars. I worked for a, a man named Joe Dooley, who actually owned the White Elephant Saloon, which is directly across the street from the Texas Hotel, down in the stockyards, 106 East Exchange, and uh, worked as a cooler and a bouncer there for a general manager named Russell McVeigh, one of the best guys on the planet. And what I got to do was see how the bar business worked, and uh, we had an opportunity to throw some of the good people of Fort Worth out who wouldn't act right, and, uh, uh, some power drinkers, and uh, sometimes you have to exert your influence, and sometimes you have to uh, defend yourself and defend the, the club, so that happened certainly during that time. How many uh, street fights and bar fights do you think you've been over in your in your lifetime? Uh, more than a few. I don't really don't have a head count, but uh, I've uh, had an opportunity to use my martial arts uh, to defend myself and people that I'm with uh, uh, several times. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the difference between like you've been real success. You're one of the few people that's been real successful in like actual legitimate tournaments, as well as on the streets. You've been able to separate them. So tell tell everybody about what you think the difference is between successful karate fighting and successful uh, bar fighting. Uh, the ability to uh, fight in a karate tournament is much different than defending yourself on the street. In a karate tournament, you have a specific area where you can get a point, a kick or a punch to the head, the sternum, maybe the groin. On the street, what you're trying to do is you're basically trying to defend yourself and save your life. And I teach my students to hit to the face, the throat, the groin, the knees, every place that you're not allowed in the tournaments. So those are illegal target areas. In the street, on the street fight, what you're trying to do is defend yourself and make sure that you come out on top. So, um, basically, I remember before you mentioned something about like part of the philosophy there is you can't condition those areas like you can condition your shins. But explain exactly. that a little bit. Yeah, the idea that you're going to go to strike those areas, you can't condition your face, you can't condition your throat, which is a great strike area on the street, you can't condition your groin, you can't condition your knees, and you can't condition your skull. All the other body parts, you can lift weights, get stronger, increase the size, probably increase the tensile strength of the body so it can withstand a punch or a kick or, or whatever. You can't condition those other areas. So when I teach my guys hard line self-defense, I'm teaching them to hit an elbow to the face, hit an elbow to the throat, kick to the groin, take out the knees, and try to get the attacker off his feet. By getting him off his feet, you can certainly limit his ability to strike you. Wow, that's interesting. So did you, you know, I remember you said you had the chance to train with uh, Pat Burleson and Chuck Norris way back when? Well, back in the day, uh, J. Pat Burleson was the guru of the Fort Worth karate. Uh, I was training with Billy Bramer, Billy Smith, and Rudy Smedley, Jim Chope, some of the top black belts in the nation at the Fort Worth YMCA. We had no idea what a bunch of great guys were down there, and I learned from those guys, and J. Pat Burleson was kind of the guy who was over all of the Fort Worth karate and Taekwondo at that time. He's one of the great grandmasters of this day and age. He and Alan Steen actually brought martial arts to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. By doing that, I was lucky enough with uh, my dad's advice and help to go to the General Dynamics Recreation Center where I trained with Pete Ludwig, Larry Carnahan, and J. Pat Burleson. That was where I got my first well, gold strike. Is it, wasn't Pat Burleson really sort of one of the founding fathers of so-called MMA? 
He's uh, known as the grandfather of uh, Taekwondo and sport karate, but past the real deal, he can fight on the street or could fight on the street as well as in a karate ring. And is he still alive now? He's still here. Yes, he's. Still oh, alive. awesome! He's almost 80 years old, in great shape. Still has his martial arts going over in Hazel and Saginaw area. And how long did you say you were a bouncer for again? I think about 11 to 12 years, totally, okay. and off and on for a few years after that. I worked for Mr. Dooley at the White Elephant Saloon. Then I had the opportunity way back in the 70s, I worked at a place called uh, Bobby McGee's. Uh, it was a restaurant, disco, and I worked the door there. Threw some great people out of Arlington uh, facilities there. Okay, so you must have been the most educated bouncer in the area, too. Well, you know, I just kept enrolling for uh, classes and the... Uh, the more you do that, the opportunity just uh, uh, offered itself, and, and I took advantage of it. And I love teaching. That's what I am. I'm a teacher. And do you think, um, we've heard a couple people say they feel the headbutt is one of the most underutilized weapons. What, what, what do you think? I teach that. I teach my kids and my adults how to break with their, their forehead because what you can do is you can break somebody's nose, you can knock them out. If you strike somebody with your forehead into the area of their mouth and their face and their eyes, number one, it makes the eyes water, which includes the ability to see. If you break their nose, that's certainly the concussion effect is going to you know demean their ability to, uh, to strike you. And by hitting them or knocking out the teeth or breaking their jaw, that certainly ends the fight pretty quick. And so a headbutt is certainly a lethal weapon. I like the elbow and the knees myself as well as the fist. So those are the kind of things that we teach in our hardcore uh, body. That's funny because we, I'm glad to hear that because we actually, for the book, a lot of the cardio is with the, the elbows and the knees because that's a lot of people feel yeah. that. Yeah. It, and, and the ridge hand, uh, Grandmaster uh, Pat Burleson was one of the great ridge hand uh, proponents of Taekwondo, as was Alan Steen. And what it is is an open hand technique. You take the hand and open it to where it becomes very destructive in the inner side part of the, the fist. Also the karate chop, who is a, a, a big purveyor of that. So all those things come to light for street defense. And, I, and all the martial arts are very good. I've always been of the mind that one style is not better or equal or whatever to the other. I always, anybody that came in my school, I wanted to learn from them and hopefully they wanted to learn from me. It made the martial arts better for everybody. And I think that's what the martial arts are all about. And um, where are you teaching if anybody wants to get in contact with you? I'm at the Grand Prairie Karate Academy awesome. at 301 Marshall Plaza West. They're in Grand Prairie at the old Marshall Plaza. We've been there since 79, Jimmy Cho. And uh, Bob Click and I owned the, opened that school and I owned it for a number of years. We go back, way back to the 60s together. And uh, uh, I've been uh, kicking and punching there and teaching karate for a number of years. Getting ready to have a big belt test on Friday night for about 30 people. And uh, if you want to come by and see us, we're open for business. Awesome. Thanks, Brax. Anything else you want to add? I'm just glad to be here. I, I, Josh is one of my good friends. He's been training my stepson for a number of years, and I've seen a tremendous change in what happens here at the club since he's been here, and I'm glad he came from California to Arlington, Texas. <laughs> Thanks, Brax. Appreciate it. You bet.